Removing and Replacing Parts Omen 25L 30L Desktop PC Series Note: Only certain models in this platform series support the configuration of the following components. Glass side panel Liquid cooling system Lighting control module LED lighting bar Glass front bezel Front RGB fan Front lighting module How to replace the access panel. Removal. Press the internal access release button on the back of the unit to push out the top of the access panel. Note, the panel will remain ajar without additional support. Grasp the access panel on either side at the top and push it slightly forward from its open position. Lift the access panel up and away from the unit. Replacement. Grasp the access panel on either side at the top and align the guide at the bottom of the panel with the bottom edge of the chassis. Sit the guide of the access panel onto the chassis and push closed until the metal tabs at the top of the panel have clicked into position. How to replace the hard drive. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Detach the hard drive's power cable and SATA cable from the base of the hard drive cage. Disconnect the hard drive power cable and the SATA cable from the hard drive. Push the two plastic tabs at the top of the hard drive holder towards each other to flex the holder. Keeping the hard drive holder flexed, slide the holder and the hard drive out of the hard drive cage. Note. The secondary hard drive holder adjacent to the hard drive is removed in the same way. Grasp the holder on either side and flex it to remove the hard drive from the holder. Remove the hard drive and reserve the holder. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Align the grommet pins on one side of the hard drive holder to the holes on one side of the hard drive. Insert the grommet pins into one side of the hard drive. Flex the holder to insert the grommet pins into the other side of the hard drive. Slide the hard drive and its holder into the hard drive cage. Connect the SATA cable and power cable to the hard drive. Secure the SATA and power cables with the clip at the base of the hard drive cage. How to replace the system memory. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Simultaneously push down the retaining lever located on each side of the memory slot to release the memory module. Pull the memory module out of the memory slot. Note, some configurations of this PC have up to four memory modules. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. 
Align the small notch on the bottom of the memory module with the key in the memory slot on the motherboard. Press the memory module into the memory slot until the retaining levers snap into position over the sides of the module. How to replace the graphics card and bracket. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Disconnect the two SATA data cables from their connectors on the motherboard. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card bracket to the side chassis. Remove the graphics card bracket. Disconnect the graphics card power cable from its connector on the graphics card. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the top of the expansion slot on the chassis. The number of screws to remove depends on the graphics card. Depending on the graphics card installed, push down or push sideways the retaining lever on the expansion slot on the motherboard. Grasp the top of the graphics card on either side and gently move it from side to side before lifting it from the expansion slot. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Grasp the top of the graphics card on either side and align the golden fingers with the expansion slot on the motherboard. Place the graphics card into the expansion slot and, using minimal force, press down until the retaining lever clicks into place. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secures the graphics card to the top of the expansion slot on the chassis. Reconnect the power cable to its connector on the graphics card. Place the graphics card bracket in its position. and replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure it to the side chassis. Reconnect the two SATA data cables to their connectors on the motherboard. How to replace the graphics card and bracket, D20X. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Disconnect the two SATA data cable connectors from the motherboard. Disconnect the four power cable connectors from the graphics card. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card bracket to the chassis. Remove the graphics card bracket. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the top of the expansion slot on the back chassis. Push down the retaining lever of the expansion slot on the motherboard. Grasp the top of the graphics card on either side and gently move it from side to side before lifting it from the expansion slot. Replacement. Grasp the top of the graphics card on either side and align the golden fingers with the expansion slot on the motherboard. Place the graphics card into the expansion slot and using minimal force, press down until the retaining lever clicks into place. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the top of the expansion slot on the back chassis. Place the graphics card bracket in position. 
Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure it to the chassis. Connect the four power cable connectors to the graphics card. Connect the two SATA data cable connectors to the motherboard. Note, as you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. How to replace the M.2 solid state drive. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Remove the single P1 Phillips head screw to release the M.2 solid state drive to the spring tension position. Pull the M.2 solid state drive out of its slot on the motherboard. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Align the notch on the M.2 solid state drive with the key in its slot on the motherboard. Place the M.2 solid state drive into its slot at a 30 degree angle and insert it. Press down on the M.2 solid state drive and replace the single P1 Phillips head screw to secure the drive to the motherboard. How to replace the wireless LAN module. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Caution, use care when disconnecting the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade desktop performance. Grasp the wireless LAN antenna connectors with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers and carefully detach the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the motherboard and allow it to rise to the spring tension position. Grasp the wireless LAN module by the edges and pull gently to remove it. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Align the notch on the wireless LAN module with the key in the wireless LAN module slot on the motherboard. Keep the wireless LAN module at a 30 degree angle and insert it into its slot. Hold down the wireless LAN module and replace the P1 Phillips head screw to secure it to the motherboard. Note, the wireless LAN antenna connectors are labeled 1 and 2 and should be connected to the corresponding 1 and 2 labeled ports on the wireless LAN module. The front antenna is 1 and the rear antenna is 2. 
Reconnect the wireless LAN antenna cables by gently pushing the connectors onto their ports on the wireless LAN module. How to replace the lighting control module. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Disconnect the following five connectors from the lighting control module. CN2, front lighting module. CN4, LED lighting bar, if a lighting bar is installed. CN5, lighting signal controller. CN6, lighting signal controller. SATA power connector. Note, the connectors do not need to be removed in any particular order. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the lighting control module to the side chassis. Grasp the lighting control module by the edges and lift it out to remove it. Note, the connectors marked CN2 and CN4 are the two connectors that control the LED light of the Omen logo on the front of the desktop and the LED lighting inside the chassis, respectively. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Align the H1 screw holes on the lighting control module with the two screw sinks on the side chassis. Note, ensure the edge of the lighting control module with the power connector is the edge closest to the power supply. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the lighting control module to the side chassis. Reconnect the five connectors to the lighting control module. How to replace the rear system fan. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Disconnect the power connector from the motherboard. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the rear system fan behind the vent in the rear chassis. Lift the fan up and out of the chassis to remove it. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. With the fan's branding facing towards the vent, align the rear system fan with four screw holes on the rear chassis. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the rear system fan behind the vent in the rear chassis. Reconnect the power connector to the motherboard. How to replace the liquid cooling system. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Detach the fan connector and pump connector from the motherboard. Remove the two P2 Phillips head screws that secure the liquid cooling system fan to the top of the unit. Loosen the four captive T15 torque screws that secure the pump over the CPU. 
Note, because the screws are spring-loaded, there is no specific order of removal. Carefully pull the liquid cooling system out of the PC. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Before replacing the liquid cooling system, clean off and replace the thermal grease on the CPU. The thermal grease should be replaced every time the liquid cooling system is removed. If you are replacing the same liquid cooling system into the unit, clean the thermal grease under the pump as well. Carefully place the liquid cooling system back into position. The pump hoses should be aligned next to the memory modules. Tighten the four captive T15 Torx screws that secure the pump over the CPU. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the liquid cooling system fan to the top of the unit. Reattach the fan and pump connectors to the motherboard. How to replace the heat sink. Before you begin, remove the access panel and system fan. Removal. Loosen the four Torx T15 spring-loaded captive screws that secure each corner of the heatsink to the screw pillars on the motherboard. Note, because the screws are spring-loaded, there is no specific order of removal. Lift the heatsink off of the CPU and up and out of the chassis to remove it. Note, if you are reusing the heatsink, remove the thermal grease with an alcohol swab. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Note, replace the thermal grease before replacing the heatsink. The thermal grease should be replaced every time the heatsink is removed. Place the heatsink over the CPU. And align the four captive screws to the corresponding screw pillars on the motherboard. Tighten the four Torx T15 spring-loaded captive screws that secure each corner of the heatsink to the motherboard. How to replace the CPU, AMD. Before you begin, remove the access panel, system fan, and heatsink. Removal. Gently press down the CPU load lever and then push it to the side, away from the CPU socket, to allow it to rise to the spring-loaded position. Grasp the edges of the CPU and carefully remove it from its socket. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. 
The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Note, identify the golden triangle on the corner of the chip assembly and the golden triangle on the socket on the motherboard by the mark on the corner of the socket stencil. Hold the CPU over its socket in the motherboard and align the golden triangle at the corner with the corresponding triangle marked on the motherboard. Place the CPU into its socket on the motherboard. Push the CPU load lever down and then sideways to secure the CPU. How to replace the CPU, Intel. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Depending on configuration, remove the system fan and heat sink or the liquid cooling system. Removal. Gently press down the CPU load lever and then push it to the side, away from the CPU socket, to allow it to rise to the spring-loaded position. Lift the load plate off of the socket. Grasp the edges of the CPU and carefully remove it from its socket. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Hold the CPU over its socket in the motherboard and align the golden triangle at the corner with the corresponding triangle marked on the motherboard. Place the CPU into its socket on the motherboard. Swing the load plate down onto the socket. Push the CPU load lever down and then sideways to secure the CPU. How to Replace the Motherboard, AMD Before you begin, remove the access panel, system memory, M.2 solid-state drive, graphics card, wireless LAN module, system fan, heatsink, and CPU. Removal Disconnect the following from the motherboard. 4-pin power connector, rear system fan connector, audio connector, 24-pin power connector, hard drive SATA connector, front I.O. USB connector, lighting control module connector, power switch connector, power LED connector. Note, the power switch connector and the power LED connector have a positive and negative side. A positive and negative symbol are silkscreen on the motherboard to help identify how the connector should be inserted. The red cables are positive and should always be closest to the CPU. Restore the CMOS factory settings first before replacing the system motherboard. To do so, remove the battery from the motherboard. Wait 30 seconds. Replace the battery to the motherboard. CMOS factory settings are now reset. Note, you will now need to enter system BIOS and reset the clock in BIOS after this procedure. Remove the eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Partially lift the front of the motherboard upwards. 
partially lift the edge at the top side of the unit to release the connectors from the rear I.O. panel. At the front of the motherboard, grasp either side and gently pull backwards. Lift out and remove. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Grasp the motherboard on either side and tow the rear I.O. connectors into the rear I.O. panel until the motherboard sits snugly in place. Replace eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Reconnect all of the connectors to the motherboard. How to replace the motherboard, Intel Premium. Before you begin, remove the access panel, system memory, M.2 solid state drive, graphics card, and wireless LAN module. Depending on the configuration, remove the heat sink or the liquid cooling system. Remove the CPU. Note, depending on the configuration or model of the desktop, some of the cables may not be included. Removal. Disconnect the following cables. Rear system fan cable. Audio cable. Two four pin power cables. Power button cable. 24 pin power cable. Front IO USB cable. Front RGB fan cable. 10 pin LED lighting cable. 2 pin power LED cable. Restore the CMOS factory settings first before replacing the system motherboard. To do so, remove the battery from the motherboard. Wait 30 seconds. Replace the battery to the motherboard. CMOS factory settings are now reset. Note, you will now need to enter system BIOS and reset the clock in BIOS after this procedure. Remove the seven P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Lift the motherboard out from the I.O. panel in the rear and off of its alignment pins on the side chassis. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Grasp the motherboard on either side and tow the rear I.O. connectors into the rear I.O. panel, while ensuring there are no cables trapped underneath the motherboard. Press down gently until the motherboard sits snugly in place. Replace the seven P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Reconnect the following cables to the motherboard. Rear system fan cable, audio cable, two four pin power cables, power button cable, 24 pin power cable, Top I.O. USB cable. Front RGB fan cable. 10-pin lighting cable. 2-pin power LED cable.
How to Replace the Motherboard Intel Plus Before you begin, remove the access panel, system memory, M.2 solid state drive, graphics card, and wireless LAN module. Depending on the configuration, remove the heatsink or the liquid cooling system. Remove the CPU. Note, depending on the configuration or model of the desktop, some of the cables may not be included. Removal Disconnect the following cables. Rear system fan cable. Audio cable. 4-pin power cable. Power button cable. 24-pin power cable. Front I.O. USB cable. 10-pin LED lighting cable. 2-pin power LED cable. Two SATA data cables. Restore the CMOS factory settings first before replacing the system motherboard. To do so, remove the battery from the motherboard. Wait 30 seconds. Replace the battery to the motherboard. CMOS factory settings are now reset. Note you will now need to enter system BIOS and reset the clock in BIOS after this procedure. Remove the 8P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Lift the motherboard out from the I.O. panel in the rear and off of its alignment pins on the side chassis. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Grasp the motherboard on either side and tow the rear I.O. connectors into the rear I.O. panel while ensuring there are no cables trapped underneath the motherboard. Press down gently until the motherboard sits snugly in place. Replace the 8P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Reconnect the following cables to the motherboard. Rear system fan cable. Audio cable. 4-pin power cable. Power button cable. 24-pin power cable. Front I.O. USB cable. 10-pin lighting cable, 2-pin power LED cable, and 2 SATA data cables. How to replace the side panel. Before you begin, remove the access panel. Removal. Push aside the power supply cable and any other obstructing cables to access and remove the single P1 Phillips head screw. Turn the unit around so that the side panel is facing upwards. Push the side panel forward slightly and lift it off the retaining tabs at the bottom of the chassis to remove it. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Align the side panel with the bottom of the chassis and position it securely on the retaining tabs of the chassis.
push the side panel forward and from the top and back of the panel, slide it firmly sideways until it closes and clicks into place. Turn the unit back around. Push aside any other obstructing cables beside the power supply to access and replace the single P1 Phillips head screw. How to replace the power supply. Before you begin, remove the access panel and the side panel. Removal. Lie the unit down on its side and disconnect the four pin power connector and the SATA hard drive power connector. Detach the SATA hard drive power cables from the cable clips. Disconnect the 24 pin power connector from the motherboard. Disconnect the SATA power connector from the lighting control module. Remove the four P2 Phillips head screws that secure the power supply to the rear chassis. Stand the unit upright and position it so you can easily access either side. Thread the four pin power connector through the side chassis at the top. Detach it from the cable guide and then feed it through the access hole in the side chassis near the bottom of the unit. Thread the SATA power connector for the primary hard drive through its access hole in the side chassis at the base of the hard drive cage and feed it through the access hole at the bottom of the side chassis. The SATA power connector for the secondary hard drive is removed the same way. Turn the unit so that the power supply is facing you and push aside any power cables that may obstruct access to the power supply release latch. Push the power supply release latch on the side chassis and gently pull the power supply out of the chassis. Caution! Before removing the power supply, make sure there are no other cables tangled with the power supply cables. Remove the power supply. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Slide the power supply into its position on the bottom chassis. Turn the unit so that you can easily access either side of the unit. Thread the SATA power connector for the secondary hard drive out through the access hole of the side chassis and then in through its access hole at the base of the drive cage. Thread the SATA power connector for the primary hard drive out through the access hole of the side chassis and then in through its access hole at the base of the drive cage. Thread the four pin power connector through the access hole at the bottom of the side chassis. Lift the four pin power connector up to the cable guide and secure it before guiding it to the access hole near the top of the side chassis and pushing it through. Replace the four P2 Phillips head screws that secure the power supply to the rear chassis. Reconnect the four pin power connector and the hard drive SATA power connector. Reconnect the 24 pin power connector to the motherboard. Reconnect the SATA power connector to the lighting control module. How to replace the LED lighting bar. Before you begin, remove the access panel and the side panel. Removal. Lie the unit down on its side. Disconnect the LED lighting bar connector on the lighting control module. This is labeled CN4. Stand the unit upright with the front facing towards you. 
Feed the LED lighting bar connector cable out through the access hole at the bottom of the side chassis. Carefully pull the LED lighting bar connector cable in through the access hole at the top of the side chassis. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the LED lighting bar to the left edge of the top chassis. Remove the LED lighting bar. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Place the LED lighting bar in position beneath the left edge of the top chassis and align the two screw holes. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the LED lighting bar to the left edge of the top chassis. From the access panel side, thread the LED lighting bar connector cable out through the access hole at the top of the side chassis. Thread the LED lighting bar cable connector in through the access hole at the bottom of the side chassis and pull it through. Lie the unit on its side. Pull the LED lighting bar cable connector gently to the lighting control module and reconnect it. How to replace the front bezel. Removal. Lie the unit down on its side and position it so that you can access the bottom of the unit. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the front bezel to the front compartment. Grasp the bottom edge of the front bezel and pull gently to remove it from the front compartment. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Align the hooks on the front bezel to the clips at the top edge of the front compartment. Push down gently until the front bezel clicks into place. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the front bezel to the front compartment. How to replace the front RGB fan. Before you begin, remove the access panel and front bezel. Removal. Disconnect the 10-pin LED lighting cable from its connector on the lighting control module. Disconnect the front RGB fan power cable from its connector on the motherboard. And unhook the cable from its clip on the HDD cage. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front RGB fan to the front of the chassis. Remove the fan by threading the 10-pin LED lighting cable and front RGB fan power cable through the hole on the bottom of the chassis. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. 
As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Thread the 10-pin LED lighting cable and front RGB fan power cable through the hole on the bottom of the chassis. Insert the four P1 Phillips head screws into the front RGB fan and position the fan on the front chassis. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front RGB fan to the front chassis. Reconnect the 10-pin LED lighting cable to its connector on the lighting control module. Reconnect the front RGB fan power cable to its connector on the motherboard and secure the cable behind the clip on the HDD cage. How to replace the front lighting module. Before you begin, remove the access panel, front bezel, and side panel. Removal. Disconnect the front lighting module LED cable, CN2, from its connector on the lighting control module. Thread the cable through the hole on the bottom of the side chassis and out through the hole on the top of the side chassis. Unhook the cable from its clip on the side chassis. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front lighting module to the front chassis. Remove the front lighting module by threading the front lighting module LED cable CN2, through the hole on the top of the front chassis. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Thread the front lighting module LED cable, CN2, through the hole on the top of the chassis. Place the front lighting module in position by ensuring that the small triangle is pointing upwards. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secures the front lighting module to the front chassis. Secure the front lighting module LED cable behind the clip on the side chassis. Thread the front lighting module LED cable through the hole on the top of the side chassis and out through the hole on the bottom of the side chassis. Reconnect the front lighting module LED cable to its connector on the lighting control module. How to replace the wireless LAN antennas. Before you begin, remove the access panel and front bezel. Removal. Caution, use care when disconnecting the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade desktop performance. 
Grasp the wireless LAN antenna connectors with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers to gently tug them off of the wireless LAN module. Remove the wireless LAN antenna cables from the routing channel inside the chassis. And then feed them through the access hole in the front chassis. Remove each wireless LAN antenna cable from the cable guides on the front chassis. Gently prise the wireless LAN antenna brackets, to which the wireless LAN antenna cables are attached, off of the front chassis and remove the wireless LAN antennas. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Align the tab on the bracket of the main wireless LAN antenna with the slot on the front chassis and push the bracket down firmly. The AUX wireless LAN antenna is replaced in the same way. Route the wireless LAN antenna cables along the routing channel on the front chassis and feed them through the access hole. Route the wireless LAN antenna cables along the routing channel in the chassis to the wireless LAN module. Note, the wireless LAN antenna connectors are labeled 1 and 2 and should be connected to the corresponding 1 and 2 labeled ports on the wireless LAN module. The front antenna is antenna 1 and the rear antenna is antenna 2. Reconnect the wireless LAN antenna cables by gently pushing the connectors onto their ports on the wireless LAN module. How to replace the front compartment. Before you begin, remove the access panel, front bezel, side panel, front RGB fan, front lighting module, and wireless LAN antennas. Removal. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front compartment to the front chassis. Tilt the desktop slightly backwards so that the bottom rubber feet are off the surface. Grasp the sides of the front compartment and slide it down and away from its clips on the front chassis. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Align the two clips on the front compartment to the hooks on the front chassis and place the front compartment into position. Tilt the desktop slightly backwards and gently push upwards to secure the front compartment to its clips on the front chassis. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front compartment to the front chassis.
How to Replace the Top Bezel Before you begin, remove the access panel and front bezel. Removal Using minimal force, slide the top bezel forward, away from the rear of the unit. Lift off the top bezel and remove it. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Place the top bezel on top of the chassis with the front edge sitting a little forward. Using minimal force, push the top bezel backwards until the retaining tabs click into place. How to replace the top I.O. module Before you begin, remove the access panel, graphics card, side panel, front bezel, top bezel, and LED lighting bar if installed. Removal. Lie the unit down on its side. Disconnect the audio connector cable, the power button connector, the power LED connector, and the front I.O. connector from the motherboard. Disconnect the two-pin lighting control cable from the lighting control module. Stand the unit upright and then turn it upside down. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front I.O. module to the top chassis. Thread the audio connector cable through its access hole in the side chassis and remove it from its routing channel. Thread the two-pin lighting control module connector cable which is combined with the power button connector and power LED connector through their access hole in the side chassis. Thread the front I.O. connector cable through its access hole in the side chassis. Lift the front I.O. module away from the top chassis, taking care to thread the attached cables one by one through the access hole in the side chassis. Remove the front I.O. module. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Carefully thread the attached connector cables one by one through the access hole in the side chassis adjacent to the front I.O. module. Place the front I.O. module on the top chassis. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front I.O. module to the top chassis. Stand the unit upright and turn it around. Route the audio connector cable through its routing channel near the bottom of the side chassis and then thread it through its access hole in the side chassis near the rear chassis. Thread the two-pin lighting control module connector cable, which is combined with the power button connector and the power button LED, through the long cylinder-shaped access hole below the front I.O. module access hole in the side chassis. Thread the front I.O. connector cable through the long cylinder-shaped access hole in the side chassis. Turn the unit around 
and lie it down on its side. Reconnect the audio connector cable, the power button connector, the power LED connector, and the front I.O. connector to the motherboard. Reconnect the two-pin lighting control module connector to the lighting control module. Click the Playlists tab in YouTube to find HP videos in other languages, and search our channel to find official HP support videos.